Welcome to the League of Nerds comic book segment number 82. I'm John Cooney here to talk to you about comics being released the 21st of August 2013, beginning as usual with my first five, meaning these are the first five books I intend to read this week, and I'll give you a little more depth on them, starting with at number one, Superior Spider-Man number 16. Run Goblin Run Part 2 of 2. How has the Hobgoblin evaded the Superior Spider-Man for so long? And does that hold the key to the Superior Spider-Man's greatest success or greatest failure? It's the end of the line for Hobgoblin and possibly an end for a big chapter in the history of Spider-Man. This issue concludes artist Umberto Ramos' arc as Ryan Stegman comes in as artist in issue number 17. Series writer Dan Slott explained his excitement for Umberto's art through this issue. Quote, From the minute Spider-Man appears in issue 14, you know all bets are off and you've never seen him act like this before. It's chaotic, over the top, and crazy that it really takes someone with the manic energy of Umberto Ramos to show you how insane it's going to be. Supervillains are going to see that this isn't your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He's acting completely different and isn't taking any guff. He's leaping in, doing things that other heroes in the Marvel Universe just aren't doing. Maybe that's not a bad thing. Close quote. At number two, we've got X-Factor number 261, The End of X-Factor, Part 5 of 6. Peter David's epic tale, Decades in the Telling, draws near its close. When asked recently about the conclusion of the series, David said that there's been one thing that has kept him going this long. Quote, the characters. They're such a wonderful blend of normal, abnormal, and borderline nuts that I just couldn't keep my hands off them. Close quote. As for the conclusion of the book's main character, Jamie Maddox, David said, quote, It was pretty simple, actually. Of course, he's still a demon. I have to find some way to undo that. Maybe. Close quote. David has been sworn to secrecy about his next project with Marvel, but he's confirmed that it will be a new series and it will involve mutants. I, for one, can't wait. At number three, we've got X-Men number four. After the game-changing events of Primer, the women of the X-Men must contemplate the future of their makeshift team. Are the X-Women ready for the Battle of the Atom that's right around the corner? Meanwhile, Jubilee may still look like a kid, but she finds herself burned with some very adult responsibilities. What kind of plans can a mutant vampire teen mom make for her own future? Series writer Brian Wood recently explained the all-female team, Quote, yes, there are no plans or even intentions to add a male character to the lineup. As you can see already from the issues that have come out, men are present in the book and in pivotal roles. I don't expect anything to change as far as that goes. Close quote. Wood also expressed his feeling about the upcoming Battle of the Atom crossover. Quote, yeah, X-Men is a part of the Battle of the Atom event storyline. Issues number 5 and 6 will be a part of that. I was flattered, actually, to be included in the event since it's only a few titles participating, and I think it sends a strong message that X-Men is a book that matters, in the comic book sense of the word, and it's worth following. Close quote. At number 4, we've got Avengers number 18. Deep in space, the Avengers join the Council of Worlds as they declare war on their cosmic invaders. The rebirth of the Scroll Empire, the first encounter with the Builders. Marvel Senior Vice President of Publishing and Infinity Editor Tom Brevoort gave some more details about the issue and its ties to the Infinity event. Quote, We'll visit with the Galactic Council, as seen in recent issues of Guardians of the Galaxy, and see how the intelligent races of the cosmos are coping with the Builder's advance. And we'll also witness the Battle of the Corridor, the first major engagement between the Avengers and the forces of the Builders, which will also spill over into Avengers Assemble and Captain Marvel and some of the other tie-in books. Close quote. And at number 5, we've got Avengers Assemble number 18, Infinity Tie-In, Part 1 of 2, A Spider-Woman's Eye View as the Avengers Engage the Seemingly Unstoppable Builder Fleet. You know, the last time Spider-Woman was involved in a big alien invasion thingy, it didn't go so well for her. I wonder if Jessica Drew the kind of woman who holds a grudge? Series writer Kelly Sue DeConnick recently explained her feelings about Jessica. Quote, She's a train wreck. I love her to death. She's one of my favorite characters to write because she's super damaged. Everything is at the surface and she wants so badly to trust everyone, and she really doesn't. Her baggage has got baggage, not only with events like that, but her whole history. And to get romantically involved with another Avenger? That was just dumb. That's just advanced class kind of stuff for relationships, and Jessica is not ready for advanced class relationships. Close quote. When explaining Avengers Assemble's role in the Affinity event, DeConnick used a musical analogy. Quote, John Hickman is doing progressive rock. I wanted Assemble to compliment it as stadium rock. This is ACDC stand up in your seat stuff. But then the more I read of what he's doing, I realized he's doing Wagner. Close quote. Rounding out the top 10 at number 6, we've got Justice League Dark number 23. 
Trinity War Chapter 5, the Justice Leagues continue to fracture as the murder of a hero is solved, and the line between justice and vengeance blurs as they head off to find those responsible. At number 7, we've got Thief of Thieves number 16, a sit-down with the Godfather. At number 8, we've got Revival number 13, the citizens of the quarantine no true fear as Valentine's Day arrives with its dark herald, Karaoke Triple Date Night. At number 9, we've got Nova number 7, Nova's eventful worldwide adventure rockets roaringly into our renegade spider. Zeb Wells and Paco Medina continue the story of Marvel's newest, least experienced hero, Sam Alexander. We'll get to tying into Infinity next month, but you should probably pick up this one first. And at number 10, we've got Daredevil number 30, When Soars the Silver Surfer. What weird menace unites Daredevil with the cosmic rider of the spaceways? For the best of the rest of this week from DC, we've got Batman and Nightwing number 23. Could Batman have saved Damien's life after all? Guest starring Nightwing. Next, we've got Birds of Prey number 23. The birds are locked in combat with Basilisk when Black Canary learns a devastating truth. We've also got Justice League of America's Vibe number 7. Afraid that Argus has been lying to him, Vibe goes on the run. But he doesn't get very far before a new villain with ties to his past threatens to turn his future upside down. We've also got Justice League Trinity War number 1, Director's Cut Edition. The War of the Justice Leagues is here, and now DC Comics presents the first chapter of this epic event in a new Director's Cut, featuring Jeff John's original script from Justice League number 22 and Ivan Rice's artwork presented in pencil form. Next, we've got Red Hood and the Outlaws number 23. Roy Harper lives up to the name Arsenal as he wages a one-man attack on the secret city of the League of Assassins to save Jason Todd. And we've got Supergirl number 23. Supergirl struggles to survive against one of the most dangerous villains in the entire universe, Cyborg Superman. But what could Superman's robotic doppelganger want with Supergirl? The answer will blow your mind and set the stage for a massive story this fall. Next, we've got Superman Unchained number 3. Superman's found out the secret the U.S. Army tried desperately to keep from him, or more specifically, the secrets found him. But with hijacked drone aircraft tearing Tokyo apart, there's not much time for mystery. And with Lois Lane on the case as well, what's in the darkness will come to the light. We've also got Trinity of Sin Pandora number 3, a Trinity War tie-in. As both the heroes and villains continue to hunt Pandora down, she makes a crucial decision involving the seven deadly sins, one that will affect the entire world. And we've got Wonder Woman number 23. Wonder Woman had no chance but to abandon London to the bloodthirsty firstborn, but now it's time to take the city back. If Diana is truly war's greatest student, then now is the time to prove it. From Marvel Comics, we've got Cable and X-Force number 13. It's a summer's family reunion when Cable and Havoc come face to face. Can Cable convince his uncle that his cause is just? Elsewhere, Hope embarks upon a futuristic adventure with an unexpected mentor. Next, we've got Indestructible Hulk number 12, Agent of Time part 2, the team-up you've been waiting for, Hulk and Bruce Banner. In the last hours before the extinction of the dinosaurs, it's Hulk versus the Chronicists. And who is the true Tomorrow Man? Guest starring Kid Colt, Two-Gun Kid, and Rawhide Kid. We've also got Morbius the Living Vampire number 8, The World Breaks Everyone, part 1 of 2. Everything has been leading up to this momentous conclusion. Morbius just found out the Rose has an ultimate nullifier in Brownsville. The Rose just pressed the trigger. Next, we've got Thunderbolts number 14, Infinity Tie-In, new ongoing creative team. While the Avengers are away, the Thunderbolts strike. Can they take out all of New York City's mafia before anything goes wrong? We've also got Ultimate Comics, The Ultimates number 29, Ultimates Disassembled continues, 20 seconds in the life of Quicksilver, which may prove to be his last. The identity of Ultimate Kang revealed. And we've got X-Men Legacy number 15, David Holler has reshaped his life in response to his father's legacy, but what about his mother's? David returns to Muir Island to meet with Gabrielle Holler and sort out their complicated relationship once and for all. How will this visit affect the monsters that haunt David's mind? Should some old memories remain buried? From Image Comics, we've got Bounce number 4. The Bounce is confronted with the classic superhero dilemma. Is the horror an enemy or a kindred spirit? Meanwhile, Jasper Jenkins is confronted with a classic relationship dilemma. Is his potential girlfriend smarter than he is? All this and the vamp too. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Bloodshot number 0. Discover the declassified secret history of Project Rising Spirit's Bloodshot program and its most successful soldier, as told by superstar creator Matt Kent and fan-favorite artist Chris Cross. 
From the darkest days of World War II in Korea and through the hell of Vietnam and Afghanistan, Bloodshot's origin leaves a bloody trail of discarded lives and forgotten families. But which memories are real? Which families? Which children? Is Bloodshot many men or no man at all? Is he simply a soulless killing machine or something more? Who is responsible? And why have they engineered the most dangerous weapon ever conceived by man? This issue holds the answers, but also reveals that we may have been asking the wrong questions all along. And we've got Exo Man of War number 16, The Road to Unity, continues. Exo Man of War and the Eternal Warrior, once they were brothers in arms, comrades sworn to the same cause, but now they find themselves on opposing sides of a battle for the very fate of civilization itself. Eric of Dacia and the immense power that he wields have the potential to plunge the world into a new era of war, and the only man who can broker a world peace also happens to be its most fearsome warrior. But can Gilead settle this conflict with words rather than weapons? And does he know how? As the world watches, two of Valiant's most fearsome heroes will meet once again, and the outcome of their latest clash will decide the fate of us all. Out in trades this week, we've got Spider-Man Dying Wish trade paperback, A Dying Wish for Revenge. Dr. Octopus was given a year to live, his body and brain in terminal decline after a lifetime of brutal battles with his arch-foe Spider-Man. So the brilliant madman used that time as you might expect. First, he mobilized an army of Octobots to take over Manhattan. Then he assembled six sinister supervillains to abduct Norman Osborn's child. Finally, he pursued Spider-Man to the ends of the Earth, while threatening to burn the planet to a cinder. And each time, his ambitious plans ended in failure. Or did they? Were his defeats further proof of his madness? or his genius. With Dr. Octopus just hours from death, Spider-Man is about to learn the answer as one of his oldest enemies turns the tables on him with a dying wish that spells doom for Peter Parker and everyone he loves. Collects Amazing Spider-Man number 698 to 700. We've also got Superior Spider-Man Volume 2, A Troubled Mind trade paperback, An Avenger No More. In light of his recent violent actions, will the Avengers kick Spidey off the team? With a villain acting like a hero and a hero acting like a villain, one man has decided enough is enough. The ghostly remnant of Peter Parker fights to regain control of his body, his mind, and his destiny. Is this the beginning of the end for Otto Octavius? The time has come to see who will live, who will die, and who will emerge as the one true superior Spider-Man. But when the Green Goblin returns, why is Spidey nowhere to be found? Plus, Jester, Screwball, Cardiac, and a new development for a Spider-Man who hasn't been seen for some time. And by time, we mean centuries. Collect Superior Spider-Man number 6 through 10. And we've got Exo Manowar Volume 3 Planet Death Trade Paperback. The Invasion is here, and Exo Manowar is the Invader. From superstar creators Robert Venditti, Kerry Nord, and Trevor Hairsline, jump on board one of the year's most ambitious series as Exo Manowar ignites an interstellar war and changes the landscape of the Valiant Universe forever. Eric of Dacia, a 5th century Visigoth armed with the universe's most powerful weapon, is all that stands between the Earth and all-out annihilation at the hands of the alien race that abducted him from his own time. Now the day of Eric's reckoning has finally come. As his Visigoth forefather sacked Rome, Eric will take the battle directly to his oppressors of the vine homeworld of Loam. He will decimate their armies, he will level their cities, and he will not stop until the whole of their empire is reduced to ash. This is Planet Death, collecting the complete Planet Death saga from Exo Manowar number 9 to 14. Okay, so that's just a few of my favorite books out this week. There's still plenty of others available, and I broke out all the Marvel titles this week in their own video, as well as a separate video for all of DC, and even a video with the top independent publishers. You can find them all on my YouTube channel at he's got issues com, and we'll also have links up on the League of Nerds com, our Facebook page, so be sure to like us there too. And of course, you can follow everything I'm reading on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, or Twitter. You can find the links to everything in the About section of he's got issues com. And a reminder that both he's got issues and the league of nerds are proud members of the comics podcast network so until next week i'm john cooney and i've got issues